Today I'm going to talk about molar ratio and how it works. So molar ratio, um, you can think of it as kind of like a recipe. Um, and you know that one cake needs three eggs. So you can set up the ratio, three eggs are in one cake. And then I could ask you problems with that. For example, if you wanted to bake um, five cakes, how many eggs would you need? You can probably answer this question without me even doing the work. But since this is chemistry, we want to set it up in a ratio problem. So I'll start with my given information of five cakes. I want to get rid of cakes, so I'll put cakes on bottom. And then I want to get to eggs, so eggs will go on top. This ratio up here tells us that there are three eggs in one cake. So five times three is 15 eggs. You would want to make sure your units cancel out. Um, since you have cakes on the bottom and on the top, they do. So that's what molar ratio is, but now we're going to take that and we're going to put it in chemistry words. So 5.5 moles of CCl2F2 are needed, and how many moles of fluorine would you have is the problem. Um, I could ask you for a molar ratio for this problem, and if I asked you for that ratio, the ratio would be how many moles of fluorine there are in one mole of our whole thing, or basically in our cake. Uh, since there's a little two right here, we have two moles of fluorine and one mole of CCl2F2. But that's not what this problem is asking. This problem is asking in 5.5 moles. So I'm going to start with my given information just like I did before. 5.5 moles of CCl2F2. And I'm going to try and get rid of moles of CCl2F2. So I'll put it on bottom so that my units will cancel out. And I want to get two moles of fluorine. My molar ratio was two moles of fluorine in one mole of the whole thing. I know that because there's a little two right here. So then all I have to do is multiply. My units will cancel out on the top and on the bottom, and I'll be left with moles of fluorine. So for this problem, you should get 11 moles of fluorine. And that's it. Um, an example problem for you is to determine the number of moles for each element in 5 moles of N2O2. Um, when I say each element, I mean all of the elements in the problem. In this case, we have nitrogen and oxygen, so you would have an answer for each. Um, so I'll give you a second to try that. And then once you have the answer, uh, the work that you should have is 5 moles of your original substance. You want that to go away, so you'll put 1 mole of N2O2 on the bottom, or O5, sorry. And then you're trying to get to moles of each element. So you'll have this work for all of the elements in the problem. The first element was nitrogen, and then you'll do the same thing again for moles of oxygen. Um, there are two moles of nitrogen in this problem, and I know that because there's a little two right here. And there are five moles of oxygen. You know that because there's a five. So up here, five times two gives me 10 moles of nitrogen. And then on the bottom, 5 times 5 gives me 25 moles of oxygen. And that's it. That's a molar ratio problem.